Hey everyone, the long-awaited sequel is finally here. We're going to be showing off what BWSC can do. We're going to be editing trainer back sprites, trainer front sprites, Pokemon back sprites, Pokemon front sprites, and Pokemon static sprites. Pokemon static sprites are used for the Pokédex, as for every other sprite will be used for battle. So, in regards of tools of what you're going to be needing is Tink, Nitro Explorer, BWSE, Kiwi DS, and D DSD Comp. DSD Comp and BWSE must be in the same folder at all times. I will be leaving a link in the description for those tools. Also, you'll be needing a DS emulator, preferably one that can slow down. Desmu Me is actually a perfect emulator for that. A Pokemon Black, White, Black 2, or White 2 ROM. Um, you're also going to be needing a paint program with layers. I recommend Photoshop, obviously, Paint.net, or GIMP. Um, Paint.net is a very easy to use program. It's less advanced than GIMP. It's a lot more user friendly than GIMP. However, GIMP can GIMP is actually a lot is a much better program than Paint.net because GIMP does not add as much noise as Paint.net does, and we don't want noise because that adds more colors, and we don't want to add more than 16 colors in any of our uh, sprite edits. Regardless, I will be showing off, or regardless, I'll be leaving links in the description for both of these, and these two programs are 100% free, so don't worry about costs like uh, what Photoshop does, but if you already own Photoshop, I would strongly recommend that you use Photoshop for this tutorial. Anyway, so let's start off with the easiest to explain, the trainer back sprites. So in the download link in the description where you can download all the required tools that is necessary to edit the sprites, there is a readme file. This is the original readme file from BWSE. If you click on the readme file, you may have noticed that there is information of where all the narcs that BWSE is capable of editing in both black, white, black 2, and white 2. In my case, we're going to be starting off with black 2 and white 2 uh, back trainer sprites. If you're following along and want, wish to edit black 1 and white 1, the process is the exact same. I'm just going to be focusing on black 2 and white 2 because it gives me all the information that I that I need to explain. So, now that we know where our NARC is, let's open up Nitro Explorer. Load ROM. And in my case, it is this copy of white 2. A, 0, 7, 3 if you're doing black 1 and white 1. 2 if you're doing black 2 and white 2. Extract. You can name the folder whatever you like. However, it is important that it must have the extension dot n-a-r-c. Oops. Anything in front of that, you can call it whatever you like. In my case, I'm going to call it bw2 underscore zero or a072. So that way I know which NARC I need to reinsert into. Press save. Now the next steps are going to be a little bit weird, but it is a required step. Open up Tink. Now scroll down until you see your NARC. Click open. Now select the NARC and then click unpack. The reason you have to do it this way, instead of just opening up Tink and selecting the NARC and unpacking it, is because it will add in a lot of unnecessary files once you extract it. Um, this is because it is extracting the entire ROM and not the NARC file. So this is just a required step that you have to do. You can extract the NARC from the ROM uh, using Tink, but it is important that you must separate the ROM the ROM, or the sorry, the NARC, no matter what. So after you unpack the NARC, click on Extract. Say Yes, 
and then make new folder. The reason why you have to do this is because if you're to save the or if you're to save the extracted NARC into the same folder with the NARC, it'll say that there is a that pretty much this file already exists and it will not create your extracted NARC file. So make new folder, then click on the new folder and then press OK. Close out of Tink. Now you can finally use BWSE. Select folder. Actually, let me zoom in first. Select folder. Scroll down until you see your new folder, and then open the folder that was that's print that's your extracted NARC. Click OK, and it'll be talking about file one not found or file one found but needs uh, repacked properly. Uh, rename, say yes, and then click on start. And that's the only time you have to do it with your folder or with that file. Now, you may have noticed that I already edited this file here with pose one, pose two, pose three, and then arm one, arm two, arm three. This is as a this is a guide to pretty much how the game runs the runs the animation for when you throw your Pokeball. All of these arms are actually used in pose one. One. In fact, let me open up a video so that way you can see a little bit clearer in regards to what I'm talking about here. And it is this one. I believe. Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> Oh nope, it's not that one. Sorry, <laughs> it's this one. That's my bad. So as you can see here, we have pose one and arm one, pose one and arm two, pose arm or yeah, pose one and arm three. Then it goes to pose two, and then it goes to pose three. And it looks seamless when it's at full speed. And I actually kind of find that quite amazing. Anyway, um. Anyway, there's something I had to address before we actually uh, officially get to editing. Before you guys think that you can just simply... Oh, um... Uh, that's embarrassing. Uh, one second. Before you can think that you can just simply uh, swap the sprites, unfortunately, that it's not as simple as that. It is possible if the sprite is... If the sprite acts the same way as... Um, or if the sprite... Like, like for example, these three, uh, Chili, Cyan, and Cress. Um, as you can see here, that there are some floating limbs around. Uh, these floating limbs are actually a uh, part of the body that is just too big. So, in other words, if this was in pose three, like it's supposed to be, it would be in the way of pose two, and you will be seeing a severed limb just around pose 2 when it reaches that animation. So what it does is that it severs the limb um, up there and then attaches itself to pose 3. Uh, in a similar way that pose 1 kind of does the same thing with its own arms. So pose, so arm 1 is actually these two segments, arm 2 is that little part right there, and arm 3 is there. So if you're to rearrange these, so if you're, so you can actually copy and copy and paste these three without having any problems but if you were to copy and paste them to uh, say like Rosa who has an extra little limb here for pose 2 because her arm is too long um, you will see a bunch of severed limbs like this being like this being above her in pose 3 and and then uh, her arm in pose 1 is going to be like really weird and yeah, it's 
it's crazy. <laughs> that was a big mistake I made one time. Anyway, so because of this, it's not as simple as simply copy and paste. You will actually have to modify. You will have to modify the the sprite so that way it can cooperate with with whatever severed limbs that they kind of need. But I will go ahead and state that all the limbs pretty much work the same way. Pose one will be in the bottom corner. Pose two would be next to pose one, or sorry, arm one would be in the bottom corner. Arm two will be next to arm one, and then arm three will be in the upper corner. And that's the same way that it goes with every single sprite. So, like for example, this test sprite right here: arm one, arm two, arm three, arm one, arm two, arm three, arm one, arm one, arm two, arm three. That is just the back part of Professor Juniper's, or that's just the left left arm of Professor Juniper, for the same reason, and that's a part of her lab coat for the same reason. And uh, this is what I mean here. You can actually copy the copy and paste this to Nate Sprite um, because there isn't any conflicting um, severed limbs that is with with everything else. So. This is actually okay. So if you wish to play as as Hugh, you can do that. <laughs> anyway, so but the thing is, though, you will be needing to edit it for Wonder Guard, but or for the Wonder, whatever that thing is called, the Wonder Tile. I can't remember what it's called, <laughs> but yes, um, that's the only downside. But overall, it's the same concept. Now. For those who are editing black one and white one, you may have noticed that if you're editing Hilbert, there there is actually this little extra part where it shows part of his part of his back and also the satchel. So this is just so that way it creates an illusion of fluent movement um, between him throwing the pokeball and him moving through with his satchel. Because if you noticed in uh, that little video I showed you. Um, the character was actually a little bit crooked and this basically is supposed to be there so that way um, it stays station stationary so that way the statue looks like it's actually moving um, you can actually just simply delete this if you don't want the satchel to be around um, so there's that <laughs> but however everything else is actually required you'll need to you will need to figure out how to work with arm one, arm two, arm three, and his left arm. And his left arm for pose three. So it is a little bit like um, fixing up a puzzle, but believe me when I say that this is actually the easiest part of this entire tutorial. Or if you're really into Pokestar Studios and wanting to create your own sprites, that would be the easiest part of this tutorial. <laughs> because it's just a static sprite. Every single Pokestar Studio um, costume is in here, including Roxy's dad. In fact, there's actually two sprites um, because it's just easier to program for male and female. Um, so 29 will be male and then 30 will be female. And then that's actually all the sprites that is in there. And I'm now done explaining the important bits that you need to know about editing these sprites. And now we get to the actual editing, which is a doozy to explain itself. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, so now for the hardest part of this entire thing, and that is actually editing the sprite. So, now that you pretty much know the bare basics of how to edit the sprites, Let's get to the actual editing. I'll be editing Nate Sprite because that is the easiest one to edit. So what you want to do is export image. Now you can name it whatever you like. I'm going to call it 000, I guess male. <laughs> I already had a couple of copies um, saved, but anyway. So now find your, find your image. Mine happens to be up here. Uh, you can close um, BWSE. And now go to paint.net or GIMP. 
I'm going to open up paint.net because I know how to use that more than I do GIMP. You can also open up Photoshop. And this is taking a while. Okay, there we go. So now, now let's go ahead and drag and drop our picture. Open. And this will be our reference. This will not be anything important to anything that we're doing anytime. However, we will be duplicating this layer. So duplicate the layer or create a new layer and then control A, control C, select the second layer, control V. Um, now, now with the second layer, all that we're going to be doing is cropping out the segments that basically is Nate. <laughs> um, now when I did testing by swapping the sprites I did notice that that the severed limb was actually over in pose one um, when I just swapped Nate's and Rosa's. So you can actually go all the way up to the top as long as it's within as long as it's within 37 sprites, or sorry, 37, 37 by 65. That, that's apparently the the aspect ratio. 47 by, gosh dang it, I'm sorry. 47 by one, guessing it's 129 or 130. Either one. Anyway, the important part is that you only have this much room to work with. Work with. I actually tested it out with Rosa and it was the same aspect ratio except her severed arm is above her so you may need to go back to so just from the tip of her head to the to the bottom of her feet basically so we're just going to go ahead and delete that Oop, uh, what did I do delete delete and then we're just going to be doing the same same thing with the other poses uh, let's change the selection here that way we can get all the pixels correctly and then delete then with pose 3 same thing and then delete and then now with the arms just the same thing and delete so now if we were to remove our background you can see we oh, whoops I missed the spot or if we remove the second layer or yeah the background layer you can see where we actually have the place to edit now of course this line green is actually a little bit jarring for the eyes and it's a little bit hard to see so you can actually change this if you like now keep in mind that this will actually add in some now keep in mind if you're using paint.net it will add in some unnecessary noise with the fill with the bleh, with the f fill tool there we go the fill tool use a color that you're not really going to be needing um, however I just wouldn't really worry about it too much because you're not really going to be using this as the actual background um, as the actual alpha channel but it does help in regards to reference so anyway after you darken at the area or not I guess um, you can clearly see where you need to go uh, just ignore the um, little shaded areas because they're not going to be any use to you. In fact, the tolerance is actually at 50. Let's change that to zero. And yeah, that didn't help matters. Oh well, it's no big deal. Anyway, so anyway, we're just using this as a reference. So here we have our images and our reference points. So in other words, in other words, we know that this part right here. We know that this part right here, oh, whoops, uh, let me change the color, 
is going to connect is going to connect to his arm or to his right arm. So that that's not it. Come on. So in other words, right here. And let me change the color to something a little bit more noticeable. Okay. So now they know where they're going to be connected and how they're going to be connected. Um, now all we need is, well, start editing. <laughs> so, so the way that you can do this is by simply, you know, making a picture or by, if you're the very artistic type, type you can add a new layer and then just go crazy with editing. Um, you got to make sure that the arms, that the arms will always connect with each other. Or you can just grab a sprite that already pre-exists either through online or whatever. Um, make sure that you save it. Make sure that it is a bitmap or a PNG. That is very important. Like for example, this is actually a PNG. Um, Main reason is because if you save it as a JPEG or even some GIFs have this issue, then you'll get so much noise that it will not display properly in game. So, in my case, I have a Pikachu from Pokemon Platinum. Now, you might have already seen this picture, but um, we're just going to be, I'm just going to be reinserting this again be, just to show you how it's done <laughs> and how easy it really is just to actually insert these sprites so anyway now let's go ahead and grab our Pikachu add a new layer first sorry now grab our Pikachu um, if it doesn't ask you for uh, to add a new layer oh, just add a new layer anyway uh, you can delete the old layer if you like um, <laughs> anyway the important part is you got to open this up in a new layer. Now this is Pikachu from Pokemon Platinum, um, pretty much. Uh, what we're going to be doing now is using a magic tool. Make sure the tolerance is at zero. Select the background and then deleting it. Now we have a transparent background. Now let's go ahead and make this, or Control A I guess, Control A, Control C make a new layer and then control V and now let's make that background Pikachu or the third layer invisible this is just in case we are to mess up and we need need that need these two pictures again so now and now the rest of it is actually pretty simple um, if you already if you're doing a pre-existing sprite like I am you will be needing to cut off its arm I know how bad that sounds, but <laughs> it is something we must do. In my case, I'm using frame 2 of Pikachu, and I'm just going to be using this pick color tool to pick the color of its body. And now with a pencil, because I know how the stupid paint tool works, I'm just going to go ahead and erase that entire arm. We will be seeing this arm later though, so don't worry about that. So now he is Potato Chew. Okay, so. So now let's go ahead and remove frame 2 because we don't need it at the moment. And we're actually going to be copying this. And then paste. Paste. Now, like I said, make sure that the arm, make sure that the arm connection is with the other, with the with the original arm connection. So you got to kind of line it up a bit, uh, so that way it fits. So that way it fits with the alongside with the arm. Now, the easiest way to do this is to make layer four invisible and then making it reappear again. Make sure that you got it aligned. Uh, it looks like I'm going to need to lower it a bit, so just lower Pikachu down. 
Uh, I may need to push it back a little bit more. So. Okay, so maybe about right here. Let's see. Oh no, that's too high. Let's actually open up this Pikachu again. Ah, okay. So let's lower it again. Ah, dang it. I did it again. Ah, uh, control Z. There we go. I forgot I could do that. Layer, <laughs> layer 4. Okay, I need to make it lower and a little bit more to the right. A little bit. Just a little bit more. That's about as close as I'm going to get it. Okay, that's good. Oh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry about that. It took me a while to figure out how to get the layer tool back. All you need to do is just press this little button up here. Okay, that's my mistake. Anyway, let's go ahead and delete this blank layer right here. Okay, so anyway, now that we have the arm, or rather, one of the arms, arms already figured out, um, let's delete uh, the second Pikachu that we have over here. Uh, delete, please. What's going on? <laughs> Why is it not deleting? It's selected. Should delete it. Okay, that's weird. Why is it? Why are my tools not working? <laughs> delete. Thank you. Okay. Now let's open up our spare Pikachu. Control C that. And then layer 4. Control V. Now, uh, derp. Didn't mean to do that. Um. Okay, yeah, that's right. We need to hide layer 3, our Pikachu layers. <laughs> and now let's move it up here. So that way... So that way it looks like that we are actually throwing the ball, in a sense. Um, I will be needing to delete a little bit. In fact, I just need to shorten the selection overall. So that way it's not overlapping. Okay. So move the tool. Selection move tool. Now it's got to be at the same same level as our previous pose. Previous pose. Or at least mine does because mine doesn't reach the floor. <laughs> um, the easiest way to do this is to... Well, actually, paint.net has a grid. Um, but... As we can see here, it's it's clearly leveled, so I don't necessarily need to do that. And then delete the axis tail, so that way it's not seen in pose one. Delete and uh, delete that part too. Delete that row of pixels. I said delete. Why is not the delete working? <laughs> My delete tool's not my delete button's not working for some reason. Oh, that's because I'm pressing insert. My bad. Anyway. So yes, these two are now properly aligned. <laughs> and now we go to pose three, which is as simply which is as simple as getting this back sprite, copying, and then pasting. And then you just gotta align it to the hair. And we're good, right there. Um, another thing is I could lower it down, but I don't think that's really required. Anyway, so now that we got that all all out of the way, let's go ahead and now, um, now let's go ahead and edit the arms. So the way to do this is that if you already have a a sprite made, um, let's go ahead and just copy one of the arms and now pasting uh, let's move that out of the way that looks wrong delete that um, what did we do wrong? oh I know what we did wrong I was on the wrong layer my bad so in fact you might actually want to add in another layer 
Uh, this will come important because you see the how like the trainer has this little white ball. All trainers have this little white ball, and that just kind of gives you the illusion that he's throwing your Pokeball. And he's really just throwing that little white ball. Anyway, so in my case, all I need to do is just copy and then paste. Paste. Rotate the arm um, 8, 180 degrees. And now let's zoom in a bit and get rid of the access. Get rid of the access. Now, if your arms are as short as Pikachu's, um, and you're editing a sprite that requires that requires um, like really long arms, so like Rosa, for an example, um, you can actually just edit where that severed limb is, and that could actually work out. So I am making this a little bit of a zigzag in a sense. I'm cutting the corner basically because once this is attached, I go ahead and copy and paste so it's just a lot faster. Because when this is attached it's going to be right over here and um, if there was that little extra block then the then the part of the <laughs> part of the little stripes on Pikachu's back would actually cause it to well, actually just be covered up in yellow. So that's why I did that for the most part even though it probably doesn't seem like I really need to do it but either way it's just a just in case kind of thing. Anyway delete that and that is something to consider when you're doing this as well. So. So let's go ahead and, well, then again, my arm, then again, Pikachu is a Pikachu, and it is a little bit weird, but essentially you do got to kind of match it up with with that, with the arm itself, like right there. Um, the way that it would naturally be positioned would actually be flipped, so I guess I could flip it around. Hold shift and make sure that the thing doesn't blur, so that's about right. So just line it up with the arm right there, and beautiful. So line it up with the arm right there, and there you go. So now with uh, with pose two, this actually requires a little bit of editing. So Control C, Control V, your arm, and obviously you know you gotta make it bend and whatever. But since I'm just doing a Pikachu, all I need to do is just rotate it 90 degrees wherever 90 degrees is okay so that's the correct uh, it's gonna blur no matter what I do that's bad okay um so what I can do instead okay let's try flipping it first and now let's rotate it and that doesn't help matters. Okay, so what I can do instead is I guess I could just kind of accept it like this. No, 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 no. I remember now. Okay. So what I did was actually take this guy's arm Control C, layer 5, Control V. I flipped that around. And then I deleted the little access stuff. So I'm going to actually need to copy transparent layer. And what's going on? Oh, there, of course. I'm going to actually need to delete that excess stuff. And that doesn't look right at all, doesn't it? Let's see. 
it will do for the demonstration. Okay. So now with that being out of the way, now we go to the third arm and essentially all I need to do is make it all I need to do is just make it look a little bit more like the second arm but or rather I could just simply flip the first arm and then call that good Okay, that's good. And then uh, flip it upwards. Oh wait, no, not rotate. Uh, why is it doing that? There we go. Oh, I need to flip it back again. Derp. <laughs> okay, there we go. That's good, that's good. And we'll just kind of connect it to his shoulder more. So something like that. All right. So now we actually have. Whoops. Uh, why am I not zooming? I hate this program for that reason. Okay. There we go. Uh, let me just make sure that's correct. Okay. And I need to do that again. There we go. So now. We actually have our, um, oh yeah, okay, there we go. So now we actually have our character. All done. Completed. Uh, there's nothing else that needs to be done. Uh, just make sure that there aren't any, um, any loose pixels anywhere before we, before we delete the background yeah before we delete the access stuff that we don't need so layer 3 layer 2 and then we're actually just gonna delete everything from layer 1 and then fill up fill it up with a color it could be any color as long as not the color of your sprite so remember that every character consists of 15 characters and one background character and now with that all done cancel <laughs> I almost forgot about the ball so as you remember the um, the trainer sprites all have like little little white balls that they throw and essentially that's exactly what we're going to be adding right now um, we're just gonna make a quick simple ball just I don't know just something like that uh, fill it with white or actually no I can't do that I gotta fill it up with Pikachu white because it's gotta be within the colors of the sprite so uh, where is the tool um, okay there we go it's gotta be Pikachu white and then I lost the circle that's okay I'll just make a new one so now fill tool, make it white. Uh, that looks pretty terrible, but we'll deal with it. Um, so now we take our pencil, just kind of. Okay, that's not doing anything. What's going on here? Uh, this is because it's selected and it's a circle. I think that might be the case. Okay, there we go. That's better. And let's let's do this here. And now let's have a black background. Actually, now I think about it, I remember actually getting issues because of this little dark streaks from Pikachu's ears. So I'm actually going to be changing that too, um, to this lighter gray, and it won't really affect too much of the image. So. I wouldn't really worry about it too much. It's not that noticeable. And using the same color, I'm just gonna 
make a little outline here there we go we have our ball now let's go ahead and just select that copy and then we're gonna have Pikachu holding the ball in pose 2 why is the background layer on this ball okay so this is what I actually tell you to make layers multiple layers rather so let's go ahead and delete that and go to layer 5 paste and now let's move into his hand okay now that we got that out of the way let's now go to layer f actually yeah let's go now to layer 4 paste move this to kind of behind his hand move this to behind his hand again so it looks like he's holding it there we go and now paste and put that behind his hand once again there we go so now that we got it all done uh, now let's go ahead and just remove this pink dot that's just randomly in the way delete there we go now we can save okay we got there magenta and oh yeah that's right before I forget I gotta delete this ball as well okay file save as save it as a PNG I'm just gonna name it to mail ed save okay flatten okay now let's go back go to BWSE select folder new folder and then the extracted NARC import image select your new image press open now just to make sure that we don't have any missing pixels let's scroll down and then scroll back up and everything looks fine so now let's go ahead and reinsert it into the ROM I made a little mistake earlier so I have to do this again I apologize um, anyway um, so what you want to do is open up uh, BWSE select folder scroll down to new folder and then BWSA or and then your NARC and now what you want to do is import the image and now you're done so close out of BWSC oh wait no before that scroll down and then scroll back up to see if there's any inconsistencies with color in my case it looks okay so we're good so close out of that after you close out of BWSE, delete your old NARC. Now go to QVDS, File, or sorry, Tools, make a NARC file. Now under Source File Folder, click on the three dots, and now find your extracted NARC, which should be under New Folder, and then there it is. So click OK. Now press OK. And now your NARC is now you have a brand new NARC. Now go to Kiwi or sorry, go to Nitro Explorer, load ROM, and now I'm gonna be doing it over here. I had to change the file names in order to um, make it work correctly. I goofed a little bit last episode last time I did this. Press open A zero seven two if you're doing black two and white two three if you're doing black one white one reinsert and then insert your new NARC press OK now on the bottom here it should say that the file has been successfully been replaced like it does right there and now let's open up the ROM which is located right here into your into your DS emulator or your flashcard if you have one 
I have dozens of them, but I'm not using it right now. Um, now what you want to do is actually slow down the emulator so that way it looks correct. I have it under one... I, I have it just showing the top screen. So just anyway, so first of all, get to the point where you can get into a battle. In my case, I just need to walk up to this door and go through some dialogue. Slow down the emulator to about 25, about 25% of attachment speed. You can hold the space bar to Now, after it sends out step one, I recommend that you save state. So that way you can watch this over and over again and see how well it flows. In my case, it actually looks pretty good. pause because it's a little bit loud sorry and there you go that's how you edit a sprite in pokemon black white black 2 and white 2 but of course that is just the back sprite i'm gonna next up is actually the front sprites and if you're playing black 1 and white 1 this is actually very easy for you but if you're doing black 2 and white 2 this can be rather difficult i'll be showing I'll be going over how to do both games, starting off with black one, white one, because that is easiest. So the next thing that we're going to be focusing on is front trainer sprites for black one and white one. This one is a lot more straightforward than pretty much everything else that's going to be distributed in this video. So anyway, let's open up our readme so that way we know which file that we need to go to. And in this case, it is A072. So now that we know where to go, let's open up Nitro Explorer. Load ROM. And I load the ROM. I'm pretty sure it's this one. Yes, it is. Now to go to A072. Extract. You can name the file whatever you like, but make sure that it has the extension .narc. Stands for Nintendo Archive. And then in this case, I'm going to be calling this bw1 underscore zero. I oh know, sorry, a072. So that way we know. So that way I won't get confused. Did it seriously just do that? <clears throat> So that way I won't get confused confused where to go in their directory. Dot N A R C. Okay. Press save. Close out Nitro Explorer. Now go to Kiwi or sorry, go to Tink. And now find your NARC that you just made. In my case, it's BW under, BW1 underscore A072. Click open. Now select the NARC in the directory and then press unpack. You have to unpack it while the NARC is isolated or else you will be unpacking, or, or else, sorry, you will be extracting the entire, the entire ROM rather than just the NARC that you want to to extract. Press extract. Say yes and make a new folder. You have to make a new folder and you can't allow you cannot have the the new the extracted narc sorry the un the unpacked narc with the packed narc in the same folder or else they will or else Tink will say that this file already exists and will not make a new file. So in my case, I already have a new folder, so I'm just going to select it and then press OK. Once the loading is gone, 
close out of Tink, and now open up BWSE. Now, so let's go ahead and select the folder that it's in. In my case, it's a new folder, and it should be in there. Press OK. Now it's going to be asking you a question. Just say yes, and then press start. And now we have the front sprite, front trainer sprites of Pokemon Black One and White One. Now, as you already know, Pokemon Black One and White One have very still sprites. As long as there are 48, it was either 48 or 78 pixels. <clears throat> As long as it's in a 48, no, I'm pretty sure it's 70, wait, yeah, it's 48. As long as it's within a 48 and 48, 48 by 48, uh, 48 by 48 pixel uh, wide frame, then you should be okay with importing the sprite. Do not surpass it or else it just won't show up. The reason why that they have the, the image so big is because there are three sprites that actually use multiple image multiple images and that is N Sharon and sorry N Sharon and Bianca so and also this is just so that way they have the sprites the same way the same size as any Pokemon sprite or back sprite this is just a way to save memory. I don't know how it works, but it does. Anyway, as you can see here, Sharon and Bianca have three sprites. And same thing with N, if you can locate it, which should be just... Uh, don't do this to me. Okay, which should just be in number 40. So, <clears throat> something to know is that you're not capable of... With this program, you're not... at eligible to edit beyond what you see here um, so that means that the movements still occur from from these three characters so in N's case he gets pushed back a little bit in Bianca's case case it starts off with the second sprite and then it goes back then it goes to the third sprite then it goes back to the second sprite goes to the third sprite and then it goes to the first sprite and it pushes her back a little bit. Sharon on the other hand does not have any movement that I pretty much know. So Sharon might be the best bet if you want to edit the sprites um, for if you want to edit animated sprites. Everyone else they're very still and all you do is just replace the sprite and you're good to go. Um, in this case though, I'm just going to, well, yeah, I'm going to edit both a moving sprite and a static sprite, mainly because I am actually standing in front of a trainer that will immediately locate me as soon as I enter into the game. So let's go ahead and export this sprite, and you can name it whatever you like. In my case, I'm just going to call it... Call it zero three seven. Save. And then I'm also going to be editing the trainer that I'm currently in front of. So if I go I guess further down. There we go. Where'd she go? Oh, okay. I went too fast. There she is. And we're going to go ahead and export that image as well. So zero zero seven it looked like. Oh, is it zero zero seven? Zero zero oh zero thirteen. <sighs> Work with me, brain. I am cooperating. I make a tutorial here. Okay. There we go. Now that we have a trainer, now that we have two trainers that we can edit, we can actually edit this and Microsoft Paint if we like. So let's go ahead and drag and drop that and then replace it with whatever you like. I actually have 
a couple of sprites, Team Magma sprites more accurately, um, that I'm just going to go ahead and just replace it with. So I'm going to be opening up a new paint program, <clears throat> drag and drop it into the paint program, and I get to select whatever I like. I would find it ridiculous that Courtney would be like Courtney would be babysitting a bunch of children, so I'm going to be doing that. Um, I'm fully aware that the other sprite's arm is being cut off. Okay, so now zoom in, control V. So I have the portions pretty close to where she is. Center her a little bit. Perfect. Now to now to erase the background and oh whoops I pressed the wrong button. Now to erase the background and any other any other impurities of the of the sprite, like that little extra line there, that's ugly. Like that I need to delete this as too. Delete. Uh, I said delete. There we go. And delete. All right, perfect. Now let's go ahead and save and import it. All right, cool. Cool. Now for Sharon, which is actually going to be a little bit more difficult because we have animation frames now. So with Sharon, um, all you have to do is put it into a paint program, doesn't matter which one, and you can pretty much do whatever three frames that you like. All it is is just simple three frame animation where he just takes his arm out and looks all cool. He honestly looks more ridiculous than anything. So in this case, I'm actually just going to be choosing choosing this random grunt right here. And make a similar pose, but not exact. So, Sharon is useless to me, unless I need to uh, locate the positioning that I need to do, which is probably about right here, maybe. Um, it would help if I take out the background first. So let's go ahead and do that real fast. There we go. Delete this little extra arm bit. Doesn't matter that Sharon gets mixed up into it. It's going to be deleted regardless. And I'm missing part of her arm here. There we go. Copy, paste. There we go, that's a lot easier. So, what I'm going to be having her do is actually something I could do right now, I'm sorry, um, is make a little box so that way I know where, so that way I have an identity of where the sprite height is. Oh yeah, and I also got to delete Sharon too. I keep saying Sharon, it's Sharon. Sharon's not necessarily a wanderer, more than a ponderer. Yeah, Sharon's a ponderer. <laughs> and let me just delete the rest of this actually. Okay, there we go. Good enough. Anyway, yeah, she's just going to be right here, and then uh, she's going to have her arm downward, so it's going to look a little bit morbid, but it's going to be a little bit required here. In fact, kind of think about it, I need to copy and paste her. Alright, control C, control V, there we go, just in case there's a mess up or whatever. Anyway. I'm going to take her arm off, 
rotate it rotate it 90 degrees um wrong wrong way <laughs> okay fit it vertically um flip it horizontally oh geez that looks terrible <laughs> all right that's okay though and now the next pose is going to be pretty much similar we just do this because Sharon's getting irritating so pretty much uh, I guess that actually looks fine right there if only it was a two frame animation oh well, it's alright uh, let's just go ahead and skew this vertically by 45 degrees uh, close enough I guess it works for the concept <laughs> and then finally control V Perfect. Now let's make sure that the line is. Uh, make sure that they're all aligned, which they are not. Nope. Oh, actually, yeah, it just looks like the last one I got to edit here. That's all right. Just need to move it two pixels higher. And one more. There we go. Now, obviously, I'm not 100% sure if uh, these are actually going to be in the same position at all times, but for a concept right now, it'll work because I'm just trying to show de a demonstration in regards of how all of this works. Um, okay, I need to move her up one more pixel. Always double check your work. There we go save now let's go ahead and exit through that go to number I think it was 37 perfect import image and now let's go ahead and paste her in there and she still has lines okay okay it's a good thing I saw that There we go. Move her down. Delete. Is that the only thing that had lines? Oh, nope. There it is. Delete. And that should be it fixed, right? Yeah. Save. All right. That's right, because it's open by... Wait. Huh? Wait, no, that's not right. Oh, I see, yeah, because it is open by this thing. So let's go ahead and move up one. Maybe that might fix it. Nope. Okay. Yeah. If this occurs, just close out of just close out of BWSE and then now save. And now you should close I said save, yes. I would like to save. Thank you. Anyway. And then just open it back up and locate everything again select folder new folder bw1 where did it go there it is save all right cool now let's close out of bwse and now let's go open up kiwi ds Tools, make an arc file, source file, source file folder, very accurately, new folder, bw1 underscore a072, okay. Oh, right, before that, uh, delete your, your old narc. 
<laughs> I almost forgot about that. Delete your old narc and then press OK. Okay, now I should replace the narc. Close out of Kiwi. Open up Nitro. Load ROM. And then go to your game. Then you want edit. A zero seven and then it was two reinsert and now find it right here open file to replace successfully close now open up your game which should be right here nope that's the copy right here Okay. So first is the static one. And there she is. There's Courtney right there. <laughs> uh, apparently she's Nursery 8 Autumn. Okay, so now I'm going to reset. Now, as mentioned several times before, editing the front sprites for Pokemon Black 2 and White 2 is actually going to be a bit more difficult than White 1 and Black 1. Now, to be perfectly honest, I actually haven't really tested how to edit the Black 2 and White 2 sprites, but it should be pretty straightforward and about the same way that you would edit the the back sprites for 5th for gen. Anyway, first things first, we need to know where we're going, so open up the readme file, and our front trainer sprites are going to be located in A071. So now let's go ahead and minimize that, and open up Nitro Explorer. Load ROM. Load up the ROM that you need, that you like, in my case it's this one. So we need to go to A0. Seven, one. Extract. Name whatever. Name the file whatever you like, but make sure it has the file extension dot n a r c, which stands for Nintendo Archive. Right. In this case, I'm going to be naming this one B W two underscore a zero seven one. So I won't forget where it's at later on. Click save. Close down Nitro Explorer and open up Tink. Find your new, find your new NARC, and it is this one. Select the NARC and then click on Unpack. You have to isolate the NARC from the ROM, or else you will be getting the, or else when you extract the ROM, you will be getting the entire ROM extracted rather than just the NARC. You can extract the NARC from 
from Tink from the ROM, uh, with Tink from the ROM, but you gotta make sure that the NARC is isolated before you unpack it. So now click on Extract. Click on Yes. Now make a new folder. I already have a new folder. Um, you gotta keep in mind that you are not allowed to have the the NARC and the and the unpacked NARC in the same file, or else you will get issues. It'll say that the basically Tink will say that the file already exists and it will not create the new unpacked file. So you have to create a new folder. And then once the new folder is selected, press OK. Wait for it to load. Once the loading screen is out of the way, just close out of Tink. And now let's open up BWSE. Select folder. Select your new folder. And then find the unpacked NARC. In my case, it's this one. Click on OK. Say yes. And then start. Now, much like the previous back sprites, I have also edit already edited one of the sprites in this in this file. So anyway, we have Nate, we have Rosa, we have Youngster, we have Lass, and we have Schoolboy. Now, as you can see from here, or heck, I can't even see it, but yeah, as you can see from here, I already made a bunch of little notes on here. Pose 1 and then pose 2. And then here we have head 1 and then head 2, arm 1, arm 2, torso 1. Um, this is supposed to be leg 1, leg 2, um, pokeball 1, and then I'm not sure what exactly that little bit is. But um, anyway, we have the satchel, we have the shoes, and with this random square. Um, these random squares appear to be in most sprites, like you can even see in Nate. Um, I don't really know any other examples, but oh uh, yeah, I like this waitress right there. Even Silen and Cress. I don't know what those use are used for, but it might be best just to keep them in there, just to be on the safe side if you're planning on editing one of these sprites. I'm going to... Now, one of the easiest sprites to actually edit would be Swimmer Female, because all she does is move her arm forward, move her arm forward like she's stretching. Let's see if I can find her real fast. If not, then I'll, I'll just forget it. There's also these test sprites right here, but there's no way to get them in game without knowing C++. Where is it? Oh. Rich Boy could also be a pretty good candidate if you know how it moves. But I don't know how how he moves, so um yeah. Anyway. Wow, she's pretty far down there, isn't she? Okay, here she is. Yeah, all she does is move her arm, and then the rest of it is just little, little slight shifts unto the point where she moves her arm. But yeah, it starts off with her arm being, being down here, I believe, and then she just go ahead and lifts it up, and then that's the final sprite. But yeah, we're working with Schoolboy right now, so. If you wish to follow along, but then by all means, do so. So we're going to export the image. And we're just going to call it 004. School. Because why not? You can name it whatever you like. And click on save. Now, close out of, close out of BWSE. And open up your paint program that can open up layers. Layers. Now drag and drop your thing. If it prompts you this, just click on open. And now let's zoom in. And I just realized I don't have my 
Miles, I'll be right back. Oh, still recording. My mistake. Anyway. Anyway, so yeah, as you can see here. As you can see here, we have a bunch of messages that I wrote on here. Um, in truth, this actually isn't 100% accurate. And I'll go ahead and show you a video real fast about this. Okay, so as we can see here, we have pose 1 right here, which is accurate. It is showing off the... Um, the first sprite right here and now, now if we were to play it a little bit further you see that he closes his eyes which uses head 2 right here or sorry head 3 right here and then when he opens them back up it actually goes back to the first sprite but then when he takes a step forward, it moves to sprite 2 because it needed to be, because his head needed to stay straight um, in order to basically allow him to, in order for the movement to look accurate. You may also notice that a bunch of numbers came on his entire body with arm 2, arm 3, torso, and even the legs and his hand and his hand and his arm, that's what it is, his arm, uh, also switched. Same thing with his feet and the satchel. So basically, every single spray in here is being used for this whole animation. Also, you may have noticed that the his arm is a little bit cut off, but because in actual gameplay and actual speed, it goes so fast that this is actually barely noticeable. So, anyway... <laughs> So then he takes a step forward and his arm actually comes to life. <laughs> and it actually stays in this pose until after you defeat him, which he then goes to pose 4 right here. So, with that all being said, said this is actually pretty tricky to edit. And honestly, the only thing that I can truly do in regards of actually editing this is to just show you how it's possible <laughs> so let's duplicate the layer and now let's select the spots where basically he takes place in this case it's going to be right here right here I need to edit the selection a little bit and then press delete right here his final pose let's uh, press delete and now we have the rest of the poses so this one right here I'm sucking today delete this one right here delete I'm gonna need to delete the head too the rest of the head delete his arm delete his torso I think that might be a bit too far yeah it was really though actually now it's right delete his other arm delete now his legs gonna be a little bit tricky delete Delete. 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 Oh, whoops. There we go. Delete. Delete. And delete. Okay, so now that we have a general idea where everything is supposed to go, uh, I'm just going to be leaving that square. Square, but I may need to change the color a little bit later. Um, let's go ahead and get a sprite real fast. In my case, I'm going to just get something, someone from one of these here. Looks like. Hmm. Let's see here. The Pokeball is right in this arm. So let's use uh, an Aqua Grunt this time. So. Okay, control C. Ah, oh, whoops, wrong thing. Add a new layer. And control V. What? 
Oh, control V. There we go. And his shoes are not visible. Cut off his feet. He was defeated. Okay, let's try that again then. Okay, control C, control V. All right, so now let's go ahead and clear up any of this annoying stuff here. Tolerance zero. Has no tolerance for any of this. There we go. So now we have the sprite. I'm going to be changing the background a bit so that way it's a little bit easier to kind of see what I'm doing here. Just going to go with Team Magma Red here. Do that. Perfect. And now let's go ahead and edit the sprite. So this is the final pose right here. Here, let's go ahead and add another layer. Um, let's move that up. There we go. And I just realized I didn't select it all. Okay, so Control C. Now Control V. Oh, whoops, Control V. There we go. So this will be the final pose, and it's okay if it's not it within the box because it's going to be because you see you see you actually have 47 by 47 a 47 by 47 space to actually edit everything and this is actually plenty of space right here um we need to move them up a little bit there we go that's that more accurate now now as for his first pose where he's going to need to have his Pokeball um, kind of moves his Pokeball a little bit forward and also his hand also moves to hmm so so what we're going to do now is segregate some of his arms <laughs> uh, we're going to be a mortician well I, uh, I guess not mortician but yeah we're just gonna just gonna make him a little bit more polite I guess so instead of being a pirate he's going to be a little bit more of just someone just someone wearing a bandana because it looks cool okay so I'm gonna need to flip this arm now there we go I actually kind of like that pose. <laughs> and uh, let's. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, okay, so that's Control C, Control V. Oh! <laughs> Derp. <laughs> I kind of forgot about that. Okay, that's my mistake. Um, I'm going to have to undo everything right now. Ah, gotta love editing. Okay. So. I'm just going to be adding a new layer and then so that way I can actually do this properly so control C oops I don't want any part of his bandana or ear bandana uh, dang it okay so control C layer 5 control V okay if you're having much trouble like I am with your editing tool then uh, with your painting tool then there's always the better option which is of course Microsoft Paint so now with a proper edit well, now with an even better editing tool let's go ahead and get this right now um, yeah let's go ahead and cut off the arm control C control V now let's rotate it 90 degrees and then uh, flip that horizontally there we go sure it's transparent there we go perfect now delete his other arm so he's not a monchamp there we go 
So now with the Pokeball, we're just going to change that so that way it's a little bit close to how he, how the school kid has it. I just realized you're not on full screen. There we go. So we have it sort of like how the how the school kid has it, and then. So now what we're going to do is just, I guess we're just going to be bending this arm so that way it looks like it's. Um, let me just copy this first, just in case I mess up. I'm just going to be bending this arm. And then we're going to... I think that's good. Now we're going to add in a little bit of shading here. And uh, of course some variation in the shading. So that way it doesn't look weird. Okay, um, probably, yeah, because that's in the background. Okay, that's good. That's good enough. Control C, Control V. Uh, let's, I guess, uh, let's remove the, oh, geez, I'm on four. Uh, I'm on layer four. It's a, it should be good, though. And do, do, and delete that. There we go. Now let's position him correctly. Up here. Okay, that should be good. Right around there. Okay, now for the easier parts, is just simply the head. Um, so basically, the head. Head right here just needs to be. Oh, his bandana is going to be getting in the way. It should be okay though. So we're just going to be cutting off his head, pasting, and um, oh whoa, didn't mean to do that. Okay, pasting, deleting anything that is unnecessary, like this stuff right here. Okay, that's good. Moving it up here, make sure that the neck will align with the other neck. Well, actually, the top of his head, Let's see here, how does it post on top of this guy? So the neck should be, let me put this in layer 5. So the neck is right there, high layer 4, so it's slightly above. I may need to move their position a little bit so that way it's more in tone to where their neck is. Okay. So let me go ahead and do that real fast. That's about right, I hope. <laughs> no. Up higher. Uh, why is it moving layer three? Okay. Up higher. There we go. That's more right. That's more accurate. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Now back to layer five. Actually, let's go back to layer 4 because I gotta now change this guy so that way he blinks. So 
So it should be pretty simple. All you need to do is just use the eyedrop tool and just add in some shading here. There we go. Control C. Control V. Okay. Oh, whoops. Uh, right there. Okay. Brilliant. Now, next is the arms, which should be which should position themselves into layer or into the way that position 4 should be so like that so the way that that works though is that as you can see here he has a pretty disjointed arm so right now I need to focus on this area first and then the rest should be the rest should be pretty easy for the most part, I hope. <laughs> if not, it's all right. It's just uh, this is just a demonstration anyway. So, so he needs to have his arm extended out, and part of his. So let's see here. That's the first part of his arm. That's the second part of his arm. That's the third part of his arm. So, all I need to do then is first things first. Get rid of this white background there we go now select copy paste ah that wasn't big enough delete select bigger area of the arm copy paste now select his hand copy paste Now his arm right here, copy paste. Ah! <laughs> Oops. That's as close as I'm going to get to this bit here. Um, we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Okay. All right. So now with that out of the way, torso should be pretty basic. It's just simply his current torso right now. So let's go ahead and take it. Copy. Go to layer five. Paste. Delete any anything that is unnecessary so in this case the arms oops um, I need the there it is the pencil tool ah there that's right I gotta do it by selecting ah, fantastic okay Oh yeah, and also the the head, of course. There we go. Now let's select it. Control C. Control V. Yeah, that torso is huge. Well, let's hope it displays in the game. <laughs> oh dear, I'm taking a bunch of risk in this one. It's all good though. Um, oh yeah, I haven't done this yet. This part right there yet. So, that's going to be the next bit. It should just be his arm like that. Control C, Control V. 
Hopefully that works. <laughs> uh, we need to lower it actually a little bit. Okay. Now, with that being out of the way, way we got his legs, his legs and his feet. So this should be pretty straightforward. Um, obviously, there really isn't going to be much change because looking at the way that I have this Aqua Grunt kind of holding his Pokeball ball and kind of positioning his arm, it's going to be... Yeah. <laughs> There's not much that's going to change here. In fact, I may want to delete... No. No, I won't be able to delete it because then he'll be missing his legs as soon as he moves moves into his second position so I'm just gonna do a simple copy paste uh, with his legs and then just um, just call that good oh wow his legs are actually shorter than everything else so that means that I can actually take his torso and um, shorten that up to however short the however short it they need it to be. So, in other words, we're going to take off layer 5. See how short it needs to be. Well, it's about one torso or one pixel. Yeah, it's about one pixel right there. So, so that means I can actually lower it. Yes, that is the case. So, So now let's go ahead and lower the torso in the right layer. There we go. And just so that way I could see where it's where it ends right here. Okay, so now it's two pixels. So let's go back to layer five. Select tool. Select that, copy. Now where his leg is, uh, I'm not sure which layer that's from. Is that five or four? Okay, that's five. That's good. That's good. Paste. Uh, paste. What? Ah, uh, okay. Sometimes paint.net can be quite a pain. Control C, Control V, move it down here. Ah, dang it, I keep forgetting about that. <sighs> Okay. No biggie. No biggie at all. Let's go to layer five. Cop or cut this actually. And now go to layer four, paste, go back to layer five. Five. Now let's go ahead and drag this down. Actually, you know what? I'm doing this the hard way. I just need to delete that torso bit. That bottom torso bit, delete, and then just copy and paste his legs with uh, just two pixels higher. There we go. Control C, Control V. Yeah, his legs are way too short. <laughs> Uh, I guess it doesn't fully matter too much. Hopefully that should work. <laughs> uh, let's pray. <laughs> okay, next one right here. Uh, okay. So copy that. Yeah, no, no. It needs to be up here. Copy that. Paste. Move. <laughs> oh, that looks so ridiculous. Okay, so this part I can delete. I can just simply delete that because he's not holding a, um, a merce, I guess. And then, of course, the feet. I can actually delete that too. And then the square I'm just keeping just to be on the safe side.
Okay, so now that we're done with our sprite, <laughs> our wonderful, gorgeous sprite, <laughs> let's go ahead and delete this head. Delete anything that may be appear to be a nuisance. Make sure everything is 16 colors, so 15 for the character and 16 for the background, er, and the and one for the background. Jeez. Okay, so this is what our sprite now <laughs> looks like. Oh wow, that's that's honestly quite terrifying. I'm not even sure this will even work. Um, but uh, we'll give it a try anyway. Really, this is just something that you need to do. Just experiment a little bit with all different poses and people and whatever. So I'm just going to be merging these layers here. Um, I can delete layer three. Uh, maybe not. What did I delete for layer 3? Uh, well, yeah, delete layer 3. I can even delete all this unnecessary stuff here. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, delete this background. And then just show this one. Control A, Control D, or delete. Now make it a solid color. And we're good to go, I hope. Save. Save. Uh, ED. And then make sure that it is a PNG. Save. OK. Flatten. Flatten. Close. Minimize. Or, yeah, close. Anyway. Now go back to BWSE, select folder, new folder, your your unpacked NARC, open OK. Scroll down to wherever your your spray you're supposed to edit in, import image. Scroll down to your imp, to your new image. Okay, now close out of BWSE, Nitro Explorer, open ROM. Oh wait, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, open up Kiwi DS. Delete your old NARC. Tools. Make NARC file. Dot dot dot. On, under new source file folder. Or sar, source file folders. Source files folder. Um, open up your extracted NARC. Press OK. Press OK again. Now your NARC, your new NARC is created, so close out of Kiwi, open up Nitro, load ROM, and then open up the ROM you like, A, 0, 7, 1, reinsert, scroll down to your brand new NARC, wait for it, file 1 replace successfully, Close. Now open up your open up your game. There it is. And uh, let's see how things work out. <laughs> uh. Pose one, as you can see, it's actually off centered. He blinks, and it's really off centered. <laughs> oh, that looks terrible. Are you okay there, sir? <laughs> I honestly feel a little bad for him. <laughs> okay, let's finish the battle and see what ha see what he looks like then.
<laughs> oh my god, that's terrible. Okay, he's been defeated. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, you can clearly see where I kind of messed up on this. I went over the uh, 46... I went over f 47 pixels, and um, that's typically what happens, actually. So, if I were to open this real fast... So, from the looks of it, he's about four pixels off. So, that's actually a pretty simple fix. All you do is just... This is... Oh, wait, that's Bandicam. <laughs> I'm not full screen. Okay, all you do is just move them four pixels. Uh, <clears throat> clear up everything and just pretty much just clean it up. Clean up anything that's wrong, like I would actually flip these two legs here. Oops. I would actually flip these two legs here because, uh, yeah, that was pretty bad. Uh, come on. Flip correctly, please. There. Oh, no, that's not correct. There we go. Flip these two legs and uh, overall just kind of mess around and f fix everything that you can and eventually you'll get it right. So anyway, um, now for the hardest one which is actually Pokemon. The actual Pokemon themselves and to be honest I'm actually not looking forward to this. So um, yeah. Okay, so now for the final and hardest thing to edit, and that is the actual Pokemon themselves. Now, thankfully, I was actually given permission by Trainer Splash, who made this amazing Alolan Raichu sprite, and given me permission to, and this person gave me permission to insert this sprite into the game itself. And I am very grateful for that. So thank you again, Trainer Splash. And I'll be using it into the tutorial so that way and get to see your creation come to life. Anyway, so with that being out of the way, let's go ahead and open up Nitro Explorer, load ROM, and you can actually choose whatever ROM you like because. If you go to the README, you'll notice that the Pokemon sprites for Black, White, Black 2, and White 2 are actually the inside the same NARC. So, in my case, I'm going to go over with Black 1 and White 1 because it'll be easier to demonstrate. Click on Open. Now, now once again, it's A, 0, 0, 4. Click Extract. Now, you can name the file whatever you like, but make sure that it has the file extension .narc. In my case, I'm just going to be calling it bw1 underscore a004, in case I get confused into where the directory goes later on. Click on save, and your new NARC has been created, so now close out of Nitro Explorer. Now open up Tink, find your NARC. My case is right over here. Click open. Now select the NARC from the directory and then click on unpack. Now this will take a long time. Um, now something to note is that you can extract the NARC from from the ROM itself using Tink. However, you must unpack the NARC when the NARC is isolated. The reason for this is because if you unpack the NARC while it's in the ROM, and then extract it, you'll actually extract the unpacked ROM rather than the unpacked NARC. So make sure that the NARC is isolated before you unpack the NARC. Anyway, so like I said, this will take a while. You may even see a not responding log, uh, notification up here, but it is still working. So just wait for this for a little while, and then when it's done, just Okay, wow, it's done. That was actually pretty fast. And then when it's done, just click on Extract. Yes. 
and then make a new folder um, because if you save this unpacked narc um, in the same file folder that your that this narc already exists in, then then you will then Tink will say this file already exists and will not make this unpacked narc. So luckily for me, I already have a new. Oh, whoops, wrong folder. Luckily for me, I already have a new folder, and so I'm just going to select that and then press OK. And once again, this will take a little bit. So I'm going to pause the video until it's done. Okay, so once the loading bar disappears, it's it's done. So go ahead and close out of Tink, and it'll take a little bit. Just got to be patient with it. There we go. Now open up BWSE. Now select this Pokemon box. That is very important. Select folder. Now open up the new folder and then select the unpacked NARC. Now click OK. And it'll say that it needs to be repacked properly and press yes. And then start. And then once again, this will take a little bit, so I'll pause again. Okay, so now once you see Missigno over here, well here you're ready to go. So now I'm going to go down to Raichu Sprite, and we're going to change that into into our Alolan Raichu. Well, I went too far, way too far. Okay. Um, something to note is that this is actually in national numerical order. Um, so, so if you know your Pokédex, you can easily find these ROM, these these ones. However, keep in mind that near the end, after you reach uh, Genosect, uh, you will actually see um, all of the other variants of the Pokémon. So, in, uh, in this case, like, hold on, let me show, let me show, yeah officially so here we have Landorus, Curum, Meloetta, here we go, Genesect and then we got Egg, Egg, Manaphy Egg and then B, C, D, E, F all the way down to G then we have the alternate forms of Gastrodon and then Rotom and even <laughs> Even um, even distortion world form, Giratina and Sky form, other Basculus, the seasons of Deerling and Stoutland, or Sazbuck, and even the different color Genesex. But anyway, besides all of that, this is all in a numerical order. So let's scroll back up to to Raichu. And if you're making a ROM hack, if you're planning on making a ROM hack, um, you gotta import the male front sprite, the female front sprite, the male back sprite, the female back sprite, the static male and female front and back sprites, and all of those, but the shiny it with with the shiny forms. However, because I am just simply going to be showing off how to do this. Um, I'm just going to be going off on how to edit the front and back, back static sprites, and and the male and female. Well, actually, no, because the male and female Alolan Raichu are actually the same, are actually the same. But um, so actually, what I can do is, so what I can do is just simply copy and paste. Uh, the edited male spray into the female spray. So, so anyway, what I need to do right now is insert, is export, export the front sprite. So, move front, and then the back sprite. Move back. <laughs> Huh? Oh, that's oh. Whoops! I pressed the wrong button. Sorry. I went to export. Move back, and then the static sprites. 
So export still front. And then, oh, whoops, and then of course the back sprites. Still back. Save. Okay, so like I said, if you're doing a if you're doing a ROM hack, you'll also need to do the female sprites as well as the Chinese sprites as well. So but since this is just a demonstration, I'm just going to be showing off the non-shiny sprites. So anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and open up our paint program. Um, I'm going to be starting off with the still sprites, so I'm going to be opening up um, Microsoft Paint here. And you actually have a 96 by 96 area to work with and that should be plenty of room to work with any kind of sprite that you're working on so anyway um, I'm also going to need to open up another paint and get this Alolan Raichu in here oh that's not good <laughs> the transparency color turned to be black mm, I could probably work with it um, let's change black color to okay would that affect anything it may affect the tail a little bit unfortunately okay no big deal what we can do instead is open that up in paint.net or GIMP since both of those have transparency uh, filters available open now control A, control C. Now let's open up Paint XP, control V, and we got problem solved. So now, now in this case, I am simply editing, editing this into there. Now the thing is, is that Alolan Raichu has his mouth closed, and this is kind of a little bit dis, and that is actually a little bit um, unfortunate. Because if we were to open up this, um, I said open, I guess we gotta open up with paint. Because if we were to open up this, as you can see here, um, part of his mouth is kind of required to be open. Well, actually, no, we can make that work. So, so all we have to do. Do simply a simple copy and a simple paste. We gotta make sure everything lines up. And in fact, I may need to delete that and copy this color over here and then paste. Select that color, make it all blue. There's nothing lingering. There is just this one little pixel right here. I believe, I believe so at least. Yeah, okay, perfect. So now, try again, copy, paste, uh, paste, what? Paste, what the heck's going on here? Um, huh. <laughs> I think I may know what's up. All right. Um. Oh, well, Plan B. We'll just have to do it like this. We we'll have to line up the pixels to make sure that we get it accurate. Okay. You know what I need to do? Ah, dang it! It's still inaccurate. Okay. One more. There we go. Control C. Control V. I should have zoomed in a little bit. Okay, Control V. There we go. Line up its foot, and that should be accurate. So Control Save. And now for the back sprite, and we'll be pretty much doing the same thing. Make sure that we get the pixels correct. Control C. Control V. 
and then do it with the lowest pixel match it up uh, that doesn't oh whoa what happened there <laughs> press control V twice there we go perfect fit control S and now for the harder parts which we actually are going to be needing which we're actually going to be needing the um, a paint program with layers involved so here we already have the sprite on there so we're just going to be adding a layer and making that making that the background layer and then we're going to put in this one oh wait no front first and then add a layer move this to the bottom there we go perfect guess delete this new layer that we made there we go so now add in a new layer <laughs> I guess I needed that layer after all Air, and we're just going to be focusing on the front sprite so we can delete the back the back sprite right now now control C control V and move this probably right down there delete copy paste up here okay so now now we're going to be going ahead and duplicating this layer um, and do what we do with the trainers basically so so what we're going to do here is um, okay yeah. I'm gonna take this I'm gonna full screen it first to simply cut out with the correct pixel measurements cut out the face cut out the body basically we're just going to be making a bunch of squares now this one's going to be a little bit confusing over here because obviously I need to do two parts of the face because that's going to be editing for when he kind of looks up and for when he blinks so yeah that's a little bit that's going to be a little bit difficult but I think I can make it work out so I think all I have left aren't now the legs now delete okay that should be everything perfect so now let's go ahead and replace this with a lowland Raichu so let's go to layer 3 because that is going to be our editing one editing layer um, let's actually change the background so that way we can easily distinguish between what's what and I'm just going to be using I guess this dark blue this darker blue there we go perfect Okay, so now back to layer 3, or I guess layer 4 in this case, and we're just going to be well, first moving this out of the way. <laughs> His head fell off. Okay, um, there we go. So now, control C, control V. So now what we're going to be doing now is just simply piecing everything together. Now if you're making a brand new Pokemon you really have to cooperate with the Pokemon because you are not able to edit their movements so so just keep that in mind when you're doing this. It looks like I'm gonna have to do it right around here maybe yeah that looks about right other part other ear control V now the ear for this one is actually a little bit more folded back than the actual sprite but we can make it work 
kind of looks like a P wing from Mario. <laughs> anyway, let's see here. There we go. Perfect. Now we go to the I guess the the belly. In fact, actually, something I can do is just simply recolor this and then add in the back sprite or the back stripes, and that should honestly be good. So, if I were to just simply copy and paste this, okay. Now pick colors. Actually, actually no. Let me do that in in Microsoft Paint because that's the safer way to do it. I'm gonna need this one too. And then do this here. Okay. Actually, what am I doing? I could do the eraser trick. Can I? Pretty sure this is a new. Yeah, I can. So, right click, left click, just erase it all. There we go. Beautiful. Uh, let me just double check my work real fast. Actually, I do have some shading missing. And it looks like it is this darker orange here. Right? Hmm. Well, they actually made this one a bit complicated. Okay. Hmm. I got to... I'll be back. I'll just go ahead and shade this all in. Okay, I think that did it, and then all I have to do is get these stripes. But wait, aren't these stripes a part of his leg? Uh, let me look at that real fast. They do connect to his leg. Yes, they are a part of his leg. Okay. Okay, we're good then. Uh, but I gotta remember that, so I'm just gonna be cutting this part here. V. Delete that portion. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Let's paste this back in. Oh, wait, but yeah, no, never mind. We're good, we're good, we're good. Okay, so now let's go in, press V. Position that in. Perfect. Perfect. Now I gotta delete the light blue. Delete, 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 delete. Perfect. Beautiful. Okay. Next is the tail, which I can actually do the same thing. Um as for his arms though, that's gonna be something different. Well, yeah, let's focus on one thing at a time, though, the tail. Um, yeah, I can pretty much do the same thing because it is the same tail, so... So all I need to do is just copy, paste, and recolor. So I guess I'm going to do that real fast. Control c Control v now to take the thick part of its tail. So let's select this. Control C. Or let's do it this one here. Control C. And now uh, let me screw that over. Okay. Control C. Now let's go back. Control V. Perfect. Beautiful. Okay. Now. Let's go ahead and use the same trick, the eraser trick, as I call it. So, it's actually a pretty basic tail, but yeah, anyway.
<laughs> yep, got it all. Okay, so now let's go ahead and copy. Paste this. Erase the background. Delete, 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 and delete. All right, perfect. Beautiful, everything looking great so far. Now for the tip of the tail, which I will actually just need to cut, cut over. I do have to erase a little bit though. So, let's take the select tool and delete this, delete that, delete that, and that should be it, really. Uh, there is a little bit of shading near the tip, but let's go ahead and copy and paste that in real fast. Yeah, it's actually positioned a little bit differently, partly because it is covered up by the by the leg. But uh, we can make it work. We can still make it work. So the looks of it, it is about yay high. No, that can't be good. Uh, okay. Hmm. Since it's covered up by the tail, uh, there really isn't too much movement with Raichu, so it should work okay. Okay, and I can always edit it later if I have to, so it's pretty good. Okay, now for his feet. Which are actually pretty small compared to Alolan Raichu's. V, but it should work regardless. In fact, I can actually use just get it fit it like that actually. Oops. Okay. All right, everything's looking to be in order. Just need the arms, the legs, and of course the face. So let's go ahead and get to the next easier part, the easier part, which is the arm. Now, of course, uh, the back arm is actually, well, in the back. So, whoa, didn't mean to do that. Let's, uh, let's just delete that. <laughs> Control V again. Now, of course, the arm is actually a little bit in the back, so what I may need to do, actually all I can, actually what I can do is just simply recolor those as well, um, since that is just slightly textured, yeah, yep, yeah, that's what I can do. Do, control, copy, paste. Now let's copy and paste the arm itself, or the hand itself, no it is the arm, the entire arm, and paste. So now we have the way it should be colored, which I'm just going to just directly cut that and put it, plop it on there. <laughs> okay, so now let's fill in the rest of this arm. Not 
in fact there's actually a lot less shading over here so I'm just going to just gonna match it actually now I do see a secondary color okay But for the rest of the arm, I'm going to have to reuse the same colors as the ones over here. So, but first let me go ahead and take this color and uh, just simply plop it right there. Uh, that didn't work out. <laughs> That's alright. I can make it work. Okay, and now for the rest of the arm, just gonna make it black because it's all good. There we go. Now control V. And I just realized I'm in the background delete okay move that forward control V it should be the whole arm too so should fit properly yes it does awesome okay and then same thing with the other arm but this one's gonna be a little bit easier um, since it is actually entirely in the foreground so let's copy so as simple as just simply copy and then paste um what just happened <laughs> uh sometimes this program confuses me okay doesn't seem like anything really majorly changed so copy and now paste okay what why did it do that? Oh, anyway. It doesn't affect anything. Just delete that. I think that is a part of their head. Yes. Well, maybe. Yeah, the arm is a little bit different. That's because I didn't get the entire arm. Okay, let's see here. I think it actually fits in like that. Then I just need the last bit of the arm. Trophy. Okay, I see. Yeah, I did miss part of the arm. My mistake. Ah, okay. I see now. So, missing the last pixels here. Let's see? The. What the heck? Oh my gosh. I hate this program. <laughs> uh. Okay. Try that again. need to do is delete this part and then delete one pixel over there and I think that should be good right 
Let's just make sure. Wave it around. No. <sighs> control C. Control V. Ah! Control Z. <sighs> okay. Well, yes. It looks okay. So, therefore, it's okay. And now for the legs. Which I can actually just simply recolor. Legs, so I can just recolor. I think you already know the process already. Okay, so all that's left now is are the faces. And as you can see here, the only thing that I really need to change is basically his closing eye animation. And that's honestly it. <laughs> so. So basically all I need to do is just cut this face and then just paste this and then paste it over here but by only showing the eyes and then and then paste it down here where it shows him closing the eyes. Okay, so it should be pretty straightforward for the most part. Um, but once again it does require a little bit of editing mainly because as you can see here the ear cuts off the face and his arm also cuts off his face. But overall, actually what I can do is just cut his face down to his electricity sack and paste it on there. Recolor the entire face and then I have a tie and then I have a face ready for ready for Raichu and then all I need to do is make it so that way his eyes close. So, with that being the case, okay, so let's do it. So, let's go ahead and just, yeah, do exactly what I just said. <laughs> uh, not good with uh, continuous monologue. Wait, what am I talking about? I'm great with speeches, I just suck with everything else. Okay, control C. There we go. Now layer 5, control V. So, yeah, let's actually go towards Raichu's face. Delete this portion and now just get the eyes, the mouth, and the electricity sack. Control C, Control V. So now I need to do is match up the electricity sack, which apparently is a bit different. So now so if that's the case then all I need to do is line up the eye and then move that up to that little pixel up there perfect now all I need to do now is to recolor and I just realized uh, what kind of mistake I made alright but it's easily fixed so all I need to do is go down here Yeah, <laughs> I messed that up. All right, no big deal. Uh, just select, copy, paste. Now uh, let's let's make some room now. Uh, I don't need the tail anymore. I don't really need this upper portion uh, anymore. I'm good with that. Delete move okay up there and uh, <laughs> let's grab here um oh derp I just derped okay control C paint control V there we go Actually, it'd just be easier to recolor first, then 
<laughs> then paste it on by using the same eraser trick blah 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 okay so I made a small mistake it's no big deal um, I just needed to play, paste a little bit more of his head so that way I can easily prop this properly Pro or rather the more accurate term would be proxy okay the color count looks correct now I can finally do this jeez took me too long there we go proper face copy and paste and that's in the wrong layer okay Let's try that again layer five there we go delete the edges delete 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 and delete alright beautiful now all that's left is, are these two which should be all I need to do is just simply crop this top part to the eye just one pixel past the eye and I need to move it one lower I believe now this should be okay I, I think which we'll see control V is that even the proper size needs to be one pixel lower there we go that's it I th think something's not right here because this one is slightly wider so that's because it's one pixel hmm ah okay I found the problem okay Okay, so basically, I need to remove this top pixel. So, from, from the second pixel down to its eye, to near its electricity sack. Okay, press Control C V. Now line it up. There we go. We got it. We got it. Delete the access. Delete. I said delete the access. There we go. Now, all I need to do now is just simply make its eyes close. So, control V. And that's typically done just by inverting the eyes downward. So, if I were to flip, flip this vertically, and then just remove the extra shading here. and then do the same thing with the other one except that one's going to be a little bit more tricky so I may have to do this one manually so from the looks of it all I need to do is Something doesn't look right though. Okay, let's look at the one over by this one here. Okay, that's how I see now. That's right. You can't remembering a line from remembering a line from one of my art teachers. Can't make it look this. You can't when you're making eyes. One's got to be a little bit derpy because if they are straightforward it just looks wrong okay and there's going to be a little bit of shading so it looks like it's using looks like it's just using the darker color right here is that correct doesn't look right okay I'm gonna need the brighter color so the so the shading from the mouth looks about right. 
And actually, I could just do it from here. So, aha. Take that. Alright, let's see. It's going to be at least a little bit of shading under the eyes, too. So, under this eye. Okay. Okay, and that's uh, an exact replica. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Alright, now let's copy. And. Ah! My freaking laptop's being possessed right now. Paste. Okay, and now let's delete the edges, of course. Delete. Delete. And there we go. Alolan Raichu front sprite. Now all we have to do is clean it up. So let's delete some stuff here. There we go. Oh, let's go ahead and delete this, or rather, just fill it up. Fill it up with this darker blue. Um, I don't know why it's doing that, but importantly, it's now covered. So, delete this background layer. Delete this background layer. There we go, that's correct. Okay, so now let's flatten layer 5 and 3. And let's move, flatten down the back layer too, as well. Alright, now with all that done, file, save as, Alola front, Move, save, okay, okay, and now for the back part, which is pretty much essentially the same way that you would do the front, but um, obviously in a different way, so, uh-oh, did I make a mistake? Oh yeah, that's right, it's right here, <laughs> perfect, beautiful. So now that's all that's left to do is the back, which actually looks a lot easier. So, so let's go ahead and get to it. Paint.net, Control N. Okay, I guess sure. <laughs> uh, what just happened? Okay, let's try that again. This time, let's close out of that. There we go. There it is. That little tiny speck of an image. Uh, move back. There we go. Open. I guess I could delete this. I don't know why I did that. Okay. Now, now all I need to do is add new layer. Actually, no. Before that, duplicate layer. Oh, and duplicate layer. There we go. And now let's make the boxes again because that's the thing that we traditionally do here. So we do. Okay, so now let's change the background to a darker color. There we go. Now let's get the still back image in a new layer. Okay, there we go. So now we got to do pretty much the same thing over again. Um, 
since you've already seen the process, I'm just going to cut it and um, show the final results. Something I didn't take into account is actually how a lowland Raichu's tail actually widens in the end, um, as you can see from as you can see from here. So that will be something I will have to adjust, but that should be pretty simple. All I need to do is just make sure that the well, that the tail gets widened a little bit. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, anyway, um, once again, I'll be back. Okay, so I now have everything all set up, hopefully. <laughs> um, I'm not 100% sure if I got all the color colors correct, but I guess I'll just be done after I'm done with everything. <laughs> but uh, at the moment, this will do for the demonstration. And I realize I made a mistake on the last one because each of these are... I'm pretty sure, hopefully it's not that important, but because the backgrounds are light blue on these two, um, actually it would just be easier if I just replace these colors with the darker blue. Um, so, I'm not sure, I'm not 100% sure if I absolutely need to do that, but just to be on the safe side, I'll do just that. So, um, so yes, we have everything down now. Um, I'll just make sure this isn't covering anything okay which is not so I could just delete this layer and then I can delete this background layer or clear this background layer rather and then I'm going to oh whoa control Z that <laughs> I'm going to replace that with the dark blue Blue, push this down a bit more. <laughs> oh boy, that's uh, that's a mistake actually. I may need to make this light blue. Okay, in that case, let me just I guess copy the color and and just change this to blue or to the light blue. So this background layer should be, yeah, should be the right shoe sprites. So I'll go ahead and delete that, the original right shoe sprites. And now to merge all of these layers. And file, save as. Lola back. Save. Okay. Whew. Let's hope everything works out. So let's open BWSE. Select folder. Let me close out of that. New folder. A004. Okay. What? That's weird. Why did it fail to decompress? Oh, right, because I forgot to select the Pokemon box. My bad. Select the Pokemon box. Now select the folder. Okay, that was my mistake. Okay. Alright, now search for your search for your limbs of the Pokemon that you just edited. Okay, far, too far, too far. Okay. Now let's import the images. Oh wait, before we do that, I almost forgot. I need to uh, change the blue, the dark blue, to a baby blue. So, let me open up paint for that. I need to actually open up two of them.
I just use the eraser trick here to make things fast. There we go. Save. And that should work out. Okay. Networks. Anyway, and uh, now I gotta copy the background color and fill it in. There we go. Now let's merge all the layers. Okay, now file, save as, make sure it's a PNG, save. Oh, uh, no. And then ED, save. Okay, and now to reinsert it into the game, don't save, okay, there we go. So now let's open up BWSE, select the Pokemon box, select folder, new folder, BWA004, Scroll down till you get to your Pokemon. In my case, it is one. It is five ninety nine. Now import image. This should be the front sprite. And the back image too. Import image. And now the static images as well. Import. Oh, I almost forgot. Sync palette. Make sure you have the sync palette um, enabled too. So, anyway, this should be the back. Yes, it is. And now the front. And now uh, let's go ahead and get the this again with the sync palette. That's my mistake. Oh, whoops, that was the front image. Let's try that again. There we go. Now for the back, which has already been synced. Okay, so just make sure that you have all of them correct, which I do. Well, no, nope, never mind. <laughs> this is the front image and not the back. There we go. So, still make sure that you have everything correct, which I do. And, um, great. So now, let's go to uh, QEDS, File, Open. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Tools, uh, NARC File open source file folder new folder bwa04 narc press ok ok and it's gonna take a little bit oh no I forgot to delete the narc again delete the old narc before you do this I apologize <sighs> okay let's try that let's do that again Make an arc file, new folder, one OK, press OK. And just wait it out. Wait till that window closes before you continue. There we go. Close out of Kiwi, open up Nitro. Load ROM and then find your the ROM you want to edit. There's mine. Open A zero zero four reinsert and now go to your new NARC, which is right here. Okay, now I gotta hack um, in some Pokemon, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I had a bit of trouble implementing it as a 
as a starter Pokemon, so luckily I had a backup plan. So that's the correct version. Okay, cool. Okay, where's the save? Okay, great. Oh, wait, I didn't even grab the code. My mistake. Hmm. Where, where is it? Should be around here. There it is. that through. <laughs> Okay, so it didn't really count the, uh... <laughs> so it didn't count the... the background layer as the alpha channel. But at least we got the back working. I mean, look how smooth that is. The ears do need a little bit more editing, but honestly, that's pretty fluent. Uh, obviously there's also a coloration issue going on, especially with the front sprite, but let's see it uh, with a male. Oh wait, actually I need that. So if you got a coloration issue, kind of like what I did, um, in fact there's actually a coloration issue with uh, the back sprite as well. Basically what's best if you just t simply take a magnifying glass and just try to look for the details that are actually kind of weird. Like for an example, these cheeks don't seem like they're the proper cheeks. That's because they aren't. So therefore... Seems to be the only problem. Oh, wait. wait. Yeah, <laughs> I completely missed these cheeks here. Oops, I mean to do that. Yeah, I completely missed these cheeks. That is my mistake. 
There we go. That's better. Now let's see here. I feel like that these colors are a little bit off over here too. So. Looks like I'm going to need to use this color and just kind of do that. Yeah, they were off. <clears throat> Every other color looks a little bit cor looks correct. But just to be on the safe side, I'll go ahead and use this. Okay. So now for the feet. They're okay. Yeah, it's just those cheeks that had issues. Now for... Oh, wait. <laughs> Oops. Uh, cancel. So now let's open up the actual thing. <laughs> and, uh, paint and paint. And just kind of copy and paste the two edits that I made. Oops, wrong way. So it's just the body and the. So it's just simply the body and the head. Control C, go to the other one. Control V. Oh, Control Z. Oh, yeah, this is the wrong file. My bad. Um, let's see here. I need this one. No. Control V. Control Z. Something's still not right. I'm missing the ears. Okay, that's no big deal. Control V. Actually, Control Z. Never mind. Control Z. Um, let me just move the ears out of the way real fast. Now, Control V. Control Z. Dang it. Lower. Okay, I just gotta remember it is. It's about two pixels away. So. Three pixels away. And then. The bottom of the ear should be. Figure this out properly. No. Okay, let's try this all again. Okay, so looking from this, it is one to two pixels. Two pixels, and then it should be. Let me grab a line tool. It's a little bit difficult. Here we go. There we go. Now I have a general idea where it's supposed to be. Uh, it's a little bit hard with this. There we go. So I'm one pixel off, but that should be okay. Okay, I'm one pixel off no matter what. <laughs> okay, let me get rid of this stupid magnifying glass tool. It's actually making it a lot harder than it should be. Okay. Actually, that's pretty much all I need to copy now I think about it. Let me just connect the face. There we go. Let's 
scroll that down to a safe distance. Control V. Now I'll put this back up. There we go. Now I'll delete those lines that I made. Okay, control S. Now let's go ahead and fix the front, which has the biggest issue. Honestly, I think it's just a case of uh, it not having the proper color. Yeah, it is definitely darker. So, all I need to do now is control C and then find it again. Control V. It's just so simple. Heck, I could barely even see it. Yeah, but it's just so simple tiny details that can pretty much mess you up. Oh, gosh, dang it. Okay. Heck, it still looks darker. Hmm. Wonder what's up then. Why does it keep showing it? Because it's a PNG. That's what's up. Okay, so what I'm going to be needing to do then is figure this out. How can I make it baby blue? <clears throat> so what I can do is Control A, Control C, and then Control V. I said Control V. Control A, Control C, Control V. There we go. Actually, Control Z first. Copy this color. Control V. Ah, Control V. Thank you. Thank you. Now pick this color. And now let's erase. There we go. Control A. Control C. Control V. No, that won't work. All right, then I will have to save this as a manual PNG. So file. Save as a PNG. Hello, la fix front. And I'll make it to the desktop. Okay, now that should be fixed. And no. Okay. Now that should be fixed, and I'll be inserting it back into the game uh, which will take a little bit so I guess I'll be right back or I guess I could insert it first and then I'll cut it cut away for the rest of the steps yeah the problem was that it was darker I somehow thought it was going to be okay Female, import image. I forgot to sync the palettes again. Yeah, if I go back to male, it'll be darker again. So I need to do this one more time. There we go. Now for the back as well. Because that was that was having some issues. Oh, and there's now this white little spot here. Okay, I gotta fix that again. Ah, did I seriously do that? Paint. Oh, that's the wrong paint. Oh, well, it should be okay.
Sharing violation. Okay, yeah, that means I gotta close out of these. No, nope, not those. Which means I'm having the sharing the same thing for something. I'm sharing the same thing with BWS. Okay. There we go. Ah, derp. I need to sink the pellets. I keep forgetting about that. Okay. Now uh, everything should be fixed. Alright, everything's now fixed. So now let's go ahead and try this again. Okay, so now let's try this again. My audio glitched out last time, so. I apologize. Come on, I'm pressing X. What's going on? Okay. Now hopefully everything should be fixed. There we go. That's the proper right to. Okay, now let's see it in battle. Seems like the ear is a bit short, but that's partly because of uh, Raichu's actual ear. All that's really need to be done. Sorry, let me pause that. It's really loud. All that really needs to be done is to move it a little bit to the left, and that should be good. But other than that, everything turned out perfectly good, perfectly fine. Um, 
There's still a little bit of coloration awkwardness going on, but I blame the game for that. So, yeah, I blame the game for the awkward coloration in the end, but overall it turned out fine. So let's go ahead and defeat this guy. Or it defeats me with a critical hit and normal gem. Jeez. Alright, well. Anyway. I know that the end was a little bit sloppy, but I hope this helps and I'll be seeing ya.